From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your MTN statewide news this Monday. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, the House and Senate are expected to vote today on a $900 billion pandemic relief package. It would establish a temporary $300 per week supplemental jobless benefit and a $600 direct stimulus payment to most Americans. Also, a new round of subsidies for hard hit businesses and money for schools, health care providers and renters facing eviction. There's also funding for vaccines, testing and other treatments and parents struggling with child care. Well, distribution of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine kicks off across the country today. It's still phase one of the vaccination process as healthcare workers and nursing home residents are still receiving shots in most states. Meanwhile, the CDC is releasing its recommendation for who should be next in line. They say people over 75 years old and certain essential workers deserve priority. Now, those include grocery store employees, firefighters and teachers. However, it's up to each state to decide its own plans. Well, the larger hospitals across Montana should each get about 1,000 more doses this week. Because it doesn't require ultra-cold storage, Moderna's vaccine can be sent to some of the more rural hospitals across the state. Montana is supposed to get 18,000 of those doses, but where, where specifically they will go has yet to be announced. Help is also on the way for Treasure State nursing homes as part of Pfizer's second wave of vaccines. Now, just over 6,800 doses are on the way to help that portion of the population. Well, as of this hour, Montana health officials are reporting nine more COVID-19 related deaths since last night. Lewis and Clark in Yellowstone counties each report three victims and Missoula, Sheridan and Lake County each one. 150 people have now died in Yellowstone County, the state's largest county, and the statewide total has reached 910. There are just over 8,000 active cases reported today. Well, seven brightly lit teepees line the top of the Billings Rims at Swords Park. A gorgeous work of art, but also has a deeper meaning. The teepees were set up to remember community and tribal members who have passed away from COVID-19. Members of the Rocky Mountain Tribal Leaders Council and Little Shield Foundation made it possible. And organizers say it's a morale booster during a difficult year. Uh, just our, our way of, as American Indian people, of uh, giving people a ray of hope and support and love uh, during troubled times. And since it's real close to the holidays, of course, we want to not forget about the Creator and what He's done for us. And, and we want to make sure we can continue to pray for those people that are struggling with COVID-19 uh, and those that have passed away. So we want to honor them as well. And those teepees will stay up until January 3rd. Well, Mount Kilauea has erupted on Hawaii's Big Island the first time in two years. Now, it happened just after midnight and was caused by a 4.4 magnitude earthquake in that area. Experts say seismic activity has increased in Hawaii lately and they were prepared. At this time, no injuries are reported, but people in the area are being told to stay inside and keep clear of the falling ash and debris. It's now time to check in on the weather scene with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. And Ed, it's the first day of winter. It is. So even with the volcano, Hawaii doesn't sound like such a bad place to no, be at this point, not does at all. it? Yeah. Let's that's take a look. At 3 a.m. this morning, we hit the winter solstice, and that's the point where the direct rays of the sun are the farthest in the southern hemisphere, which means that we have more darkness in the northern hemisphere. Shortest day of the year for us in terms of the amount of daylight we typically see. And regionally, we're seeing avalanche problems over to western Montana. That's going to be aggravated by more snow and wind heading in towards tonight. Meanwhile, a wind advisory will kick in in that area around uh, Livingston as we start getting into the evening hours and tomorrow those winds spread across the eastern plains. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks Ed. Well, in a time when everything is hands off, what does that mean for learning opportunities that count on the sense of touch? MTN's Victoria Hill went to a Billings Children's Museum to find out how things have been going since the start of the pandemic and if there's any signs of a rebound in sight. 2020 started off with a bang for Wise Wonders Science and Discovery Museum. Settled in to a new, larger location, it all seemed so promising. But then... It was silent. 
this is this space reverberates with like laughter and play when the kids are in here and it was silent. It was heartbreaking, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, we have our board, our staff, everyone had worked so hard to, to see this space grow. They made the early decision to close alongside Billings Public Schools. And when one door closed, another opened. We had the opportunity to sort of limp along and try to do business as usual or to shift gears and say, well, we know what we want to be a year from now, two years from now, so let's start on that vision and start on that focus. A vision in the making steered by community input. You don't have to go far or wait long to get a glimpse. It's just a click away on the museum website. You can actually interact with with the pictures that you see. I mean, there's a nice 2D picture there, but you can click on it and actually do a 360 degree uh, revolution of what that space would look like. And if you have uh, VR capabilities, either through goggles or the, the Google cardboard glasses, you can actually set that so you can stand in the room and and look around and see the space as, as we envision it. This new vision promises to have a little something for everyone. We're big advocates of lifelong learning, curiosity for the sake of curiosity. So we're really shifting our focus on to how do we expand our programming, retain those offerings for the, the younger age children, but expand into the science, into the technology. With so much focus on the future, the museum is still keeping its promise to the present, offering virtual homeschooling and interactive weekly challenges online. If you can have fun learning, you're going to want to continue to do that. And so we are trying to build opportunities of having kids and families and parents come in and engage in ways that not only are they learning, but they're having a great time and wanting to engage more and to explore more. Although the year didn't exactly begin on a high note, the museum hopes to end it on one. The A.J. Blaine Foundation has offered a $50,000 matching gift through the end of 2020. I think there's definitely hope on the horizon. And thankfully, we have a great leader in Pete who is good at his job and has managed to keep us alive and thriving. And I can say thriving, we aren't barely making it, but with the support of the community and with the work that Pete has been doing with and along with our staff, we have managed to have a strong foundation to build on. A Billings native, Pete sees a need for a museum like Wise Wonders in the community, not just as an option for entertainment, but so much more. I think it's important to have a trusted source of, of information, a trusted source of engagement, a place that you can come and learn, be curious, not be afraid to make mistakes, not be afraid to make a mess, um, and have a few people there to sort of guide you through that, that process. In Billings, Victoria Hill, MTN News. Thanks so much, Victoria. Now, if you'd like to take part in the virtual homeschool program, the weekly challenges, take the interactive tour, or learn more about the matching gift by the A.J. Blaine Foundation, it can all be found at wisewonders.org. Well, the city of Missoula is working to turn a property on the Superfund list into housing. The Missoula Redevelopment Agency approved $36,000 in tax increment financing to complete cleanup of the site in Midtown. The city will also need to get the site taken off the Superfund list. Missoula purchased the property from Montana Rail Link in 2017 and redeveloped the southern portion into a park. Some of the soil was impacted by lead. Well, thanks to a voter-approved mill levy earlier this year, Gallatin County Search and Rescue is announcing some big plans. Search and Rescue will build a new base moving from its downtown Bozeman location off of Tamarack Street over to the Four Corners area near Jack Rabbit and Baxter Lane. The new location will give them closer access to waterways, the interstate and Big Sky. The new money will pay for much needed equipment upgrades to make it safer for those rescue volunteers. Well, there's more ahead on your new news. Skiers and boarders are so eager to hit the hill that it's been overloading the computer system at Bridger Bowl. Some good information to help you ease that process. But first, meteorologist Ed McIntosh is in next with your statewide weather forecast. Don't go away.